Hello. 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 This is, uh, you can hear this. So hello, my name is um, Gregory Jenkins and I'm with the Somerville Arts Council and I just wanted to sort of do some opening remarks or just say thank you all for coming. Um, there's a lot of people to thank. Um, what we have here is our first uh, sort of first gathering of our murals. This is for our second year, which is really wonderful. And um, last year, I think you all know that we invited three other muralists into town, and this year we have another three. And um, what's fascinating is we've done this, and it's sort of very different. Like we've always done mural projects or sort of working with local people, but we're obviously bringing in folks from out of town that are sort of you know incredibly well known. Um, and it's exciting, I think there's this, you know, amazing trend of street art type of festivals or events that are going on in Worcester and Lynn, and, you know, we learned a lot from the folks up in Lynn a few years ago when we were talking to them about logistics. Um, so it's very different, like, doing our little, you know, our Mystic Mural program that we've done for 20-some years with local people and youth is very different than inviting people from Haiti or inviting people from Philly or inviting somebody from here who never got in touch with us. She's our Somerville resident. Um, but to say thank you to you know our host uh, with the Somerville Library, Dave Ortega is with Somerville Media and last year he helped us, uh, actually we're on the jury at the same time and also did help us with the moderation last year. So it's been a great collaboration. Special thanks to Nina, who is on our staff. Heather's on our staff. Nina's been coordinating this project for the last couple of years. Uh, and I think she's learned a lot. We've all learned a lot. And I think she's enjoyed a lot. And uh, that's the beauty of this work, right, is, is to sort of have all this exchange and to learn from this and to sort of, uh, you know, have people here in our city and inviting them. Um, and Jen, for me, some of the main streets, there's a lot of people to thank. Um, and I'm probably going to leave out people. What we also have tonight is a special surprise. If you know about our work within the, you know, the immigrant community, within Somerville's community, we've been working with Carolinas for uh, three years or so, and they were part of our, you know, burgeoning sort of entrepreneurs with our Nibble uh, restaurant and Nibble programming that we do around food and culture and community. And they just got today their own license for their own small space, restaurant space in Arizona. Now I've forgotten now who has a birthday. You. <laughs> you. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. She had got a great little birthday gift today. Yeah. Now birthday gift. And uh, I think hopefully Ben at ISD was very happy. And, <laughs> and we're going to get the same experience next Wednesday when Ben comes down to our middle program. Um, but what I'll do, so the <coughs> format here is, is basically um, David has questions and pass it around and then at the same time we'll open this up to you guys hopefully pretty quickly. And we're also going to have a little reception at Rincon just down the street after this is over. You all are all welcome to come over. And that's kind of the format. And Nina is going to sort of make some introductions specifically to the artist. And thanks again for coming out and uh, thanks for supporting us over the years. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nina. Thank you all for coming. I won't delay this any longer. Um, I'll give it over to Dave to introduce the artist, but I just wanted to say um, one of the things I like the most about getting to work on this project is meeting amazing artists um, from all different backgrounds, and I think it really represents Somerville well that we have such a mix of artists, and we particularly this year wanted to have artists who represent the communities that are really heavily represented in Somerville. Um, and make sure that the diversity of Somerville is reflected in our artist diversity and telling the stories of um, different communities and making sure the community feels represented in the art that we're having in Somerville. Um, and it's been so wonderful to get to meet all of these artists and I'm very, very excited to see um, the final murals this year. And for those of you who haven't seen or don't know about the murals from last year, one of them is right there. Um, there's one a little further up Broadway and um, Maybe at the end we'll just say where each of these artists are working so you can go by and visit them. Um, and a few of them are going to be done painting soon, so you can go visit soon before they're done. So I'd like to introduce Dave Ortega from the Somerville Media Center, who's also an artist in his own right. And we really appreciate you moderating today and 
um, being part of this project with us. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Uh, and thank you to each of the artists uh, for, for participating in this panel and for coming to Somerville and working, uh, bringing your work to walls here in Somerville that need some art, <laughs> some much needed art. Um, so I will, I'll start off with some introductions. Um, these are the same introductions that were on the press release that went out. Um, and I'll start on the far end and work my way back. Um, imagine, and I should have asked you how you pronounce your name. Sneha. Sneha Shrestha. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, awesome. I'm just going to refer to you as Imagine. <laughs> uh, is a Nepali artist who paints mindful mantras in her native language and meshes the aesthetics of Sanskrit scriptures with graffiti influences, being the first to mesh Nepali alphabets with American graffiti. She has shown her work in several exhibitions, commissioned works, and public walls around the world, including San Francisco, Bali, Istanbul, Geneva, and Copenhagen. Sneha received her master's degree from Harvard University. When not painting, Sneha works as the arts program manager at the Lakshmi Mittal and Family South Asia Institute at Harvard University. Her latest exhibition, which is amazing by the way, Mindful Mandalas, is currently on view at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. She also has created work, works, work for clients such as Reebok, Facebook, Harvard, Montana Cans, TripAdvisor, Neiman Marcus, and Red Bull. And then, um, and then we have Carlo Rosa, born in San Salvador. Carlo Rosa currently lives and works in Philadelphia. Coming from a family of artists who worked with diverse media, Rosa was always inspired by a young age to work creatively. He holds a degree in fine and visual arts from the Centro Nacional de, de Artes and a degree in graphic design from Don Bosco University. After becoming frustrated with the exclusivity of the San Salvador gallery scene, Rosa began to define his own street style. His colorful pieces portray the vibrant Latin American culture and mirror the sounds, roots, and forms of the urban tropical lifestyle. Welcome to you. And Pascal Michel. Born in Haiti, artist Pascal Michel is a self-taught painter. Through his passion for his country's history, Michel has come to specialize in painting the heroes of the Haitian Revolution. Pascal frequently portrays Toussaint Louverture, the leader of the Haitian slave result that resulted in the world's first black independent nation founded in 1804. Whether he is depicting historic figures and events or contemporary scenes, Pascal always incorporates the rich colors of his homeland. For his paintings, Michel finds inspiration through reading history, listening to music, observing the open market scenes of his home, and venturing around the rural countrysides. Michel first visited the United States during the summer of 2014 in conjunction with the Boston Public Library's exhibit celebrating Toussaint Levachour, where Pascal's paintings were on display through September 2014 at the BPL Mattapan branch. Pascal was the only living artist in Haiti whose work was exhibited. More recently, the Haitian Art Artists' Assembly of Massachusetts has inducted Pascal as one of their newest members. We welcome to you all. How are you all feeling after working hard in the sun? <laughs> there is a mic that we're going to need you all to pass around. Oh, perfect. You have it. Oh, awesome. Um, so, um, let's start off talking about process, and um, can you all briefly describe your process with your mural, mural projects here in Somerville, and then you, you can maybe talk us through your idea, how that came about. Um, do, do you start off with sketches? How much of your process is digital? Um, and once you're working on the wall, do you sketch, or do you map it out, or do you let it flow? Is it a combination of all that? Um, and any, any one of you can start off, but I'd love to hear from all of you about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. um, thank you, thank you for having us here op to open the space for us. Um, it's nice to have the Salvadoran community present too. Um, uh, so for the design, I think, uh, in my case, I, I usually have like a, 
work as a digital collage. Um, I, I guess it all depends on how how much time I invest on the studio just to put my ideas on paper or on the computer. But it usually works when um, I'm using. <laughs> Um, um, if I have a concept or or like a um, like a like a group of ideas that I have in my mind, I usually digitally make like a this collage, like really random stuff, just to have an idea visually, and then I choose which media I want to use. Um, for this project, I've been trying to uh, I've been designing some portraits. Um, based on um, specifically Salvadorian culture and I use a lot of flora and uh, in my designs and colors to try to implement this idea of like uh, we all have a nostalgic feeling when we are away and the idea of being away uh, me being away from my country what makes me come back are the colors and shapes of the flora for example from from El Salvador, and and it reminds me of uh, since I was like a little boy until like grown up. Um, so it has like a it has like an instant effect, right? So I usually use the those elements of flora and uh, that are like really really specific for the tropics, and that it's a, a easy way to connect to people, right? Uh, and then I use the portraits. Uh, in this case, of a friend of mine that moved to Boston six years ago too, and uh, we were friends um, also with my wife. She was a friend of my wife, and uh, we did music together. We did art together in El Salvador, and then see her here. She continued studying, um, so I thought about using her portrait as uh, like a just a representation of the whole Salvadorian community. Um, and now that we have the wall, specifically talking about the design, putting it on the wall, I, yeah, just uh, take a little bit of a measurement from the digital design. I do a sketch on paper first, and then I just go on the wall. Yeah, just like just to have like an idea of where the stuff is gonna be. Uh, but then once it's on the wall, if something changes depending on uh, the structure, it's, you you see it over there. I mean, it's like the design is like an idea. Once it's on the wall, it's like really, really, you know how it's gonna look like. Yeah, uh -huh. that's my case. Moi, c'est Pascal. Sorti au Cap, na Haiti. Bon, sorti mon content parce que tout venu ici à. My name is Pascal. I'm from Cap Haitian in Haiti, and I'm very delighted to be here in Samoa. In 2014, you participated in a great exhibition that you did in the library of Boston. In 2014, I had the privilege to participate in a huge exhibition. Après me venir tourner en Haïti, moi avec un autre artiste, on t'a rencontré qui ses amis pour travailler ensemble. On t'a fait un plan côté on t'a voulu marier deux cultures ensemble. To start, I was supposed to be here with another artist from Haiti, and uh, together we put our head together to see how we can merge the two cultures together. On t'a marqué une next on t'a travaillé. On t'a pris un boussole blanc, pour que nous travaillions un objectif. On t'a travaillé un petit, pour que nous représentions la culture haïtienne, mélangée à la culture ici dans Boston. On a mis nous en face de l'hizol et on a commencé à sketcher des idées sur comment mettre Haïti et Boston ensemble. Et puis, côté moi-même, dans un côté de moi, nous avons fait un grand miracle. Nous avons senti un grand pile Et puis, tout le monde nous a félicité. Les moins photos. Et puis, nous avons fait un grand Watson, plus Henry. Les moins photos. Et puis, nous avons fait un grand miracle. Nous avons fait un grand miracle ici. Quand nous avons fait 
our ideas together, we were able to come up with a concept. And this concept, we took it, and before we came, I came here, we, I, I and the next Jamari, we painted a mural in Cape Haitian in our city, and which we sent the pictures to the mural to Watson and Henry, and they were very happy with the, the results. Je sens que je suis parce que l'autre artiste là que supposé là, bon, je ne suis pas venu, mais moi-même, je pense en charge de travailler matin, comme midi, en bas soleil chaud, fatigué en pile, pour me réaliser et ça. Je me sens que je suis pile, quand je suis présenté, je suis là, 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 It's too bad that my colleague was not able to come. Uh, I take it upon myself to, it's a painting that two artists were collaborating to do together. So I have to represent myself and the other artists, and which requires that I work day, all day long, multiple days by myself, under this hot sun. But he was saying that, I said, brother, you're from Haiti, you were used to the hot sun. <laughs> uh, but he is very happy about how it's coming along. C'est tout ça me dit me dit. Um, Pascal has a lot to say, and I told him let's wait for the next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am Watson Michel, a member of the Haitian community here in Somerville. I am an adjustment counselor at uh, Next Road Full Circle, where I've been working for the Somerville Public School for about 22 years. I'm very happy to be part of a anything Haitians, and uh, I love to work with the vibrant community of immigrants that we have in Somerville, and uh, I'm a friend of the Art Council. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I want to apologize in the beginning because my brain is a little fried because I've been painting in the sun and towards the end I could just feel my mind slow down. <laughs> so I'm going to try my best um, to explain my process. Um, so first I think of you know the place that I'm painting and how I fit into that picture. Second thing I look at is where the wall is. So all my work is site specific. So I don't go with a pre sort of plan and then kind of paste it on the wall. Um, if I can visit it beforehand, I'll spend time at the wall and see how people interact with that space, how people walk around it, how people would drive uh, across it. Um, and I wanna usually design the wall so that it can be seen from all different angles. I'm trying to think how people would interact with the wall, what angles they'll see it from. Um, so after sort of like the pre-research phase, um, then I think about composition. Then I go back to my tablet and think about different compositions that could possibly work um, with the piece. So for this work, um, I was so honored to be invited to paint for this festival um, because it's my first mural in Somerville. And I've been this is the first city that like, I've lived in since I moved to Boston. And I've stayed in the same place and I love Somerville and it's so inviting. And I've moved back to Nepal for a couple of years and came right back to my same apartment in Somerville. <laughs> and I've loved it, you know? Um, and so I was thinking, you know, given this honor, what would I put on the wall? What's the message? What do I want to share? Um, and so I wanted to share this idea of home. Um, with the community, uh, with the city of Somerville. And I was thinking about different things I could write in my native language. Um, and usually, you know, reading the wall isn't part of what I expect people to do because it's in Nepali or it's in Sanskrit. Obviously, people won't be able to read, but the idea behind it is to be able to appreciate something that looks different from a different culture and still... Uh, respect and appreciate it uh, and still have conversations about it or ask questions about it and it's the same you know the idea comes from just the idea of people from all different walks of life living in one city you might not understand each other's language 
but it's always, you know, you can always appreciate or respect them for who they are. Um, and so that's the idea behind me sticking to writing in Nepali or Sanskrit all the time. Um, but since we're here and we're talking about the art, um, what I'm writing on the wall is, um, so I write, I choose a phrase and then I repeat it over and over again throughout the wall. The phrase that I'm writing in Nepali is, home is where the heart is free. And it really resonated with me because, you know, how do you, I go to Nepal once or twice a year. I go pretty often at this point, but this place feels like home as well. And this is where I get to express myself freely and do what I love. And that's an important part of calling a place home for me. Um, so, yeah, I choose the phrase, I choose the architecture, or like I look at the architecture and then go from there. When it comes to the handwriting itself, um, I write it directly on the wall. So I never sketch the handwriting because it's handwriting. So like I just use a really big brush and then write the letters in like calligraphy form. Um, so there's never a sketch for that. There's a sketch for the composition, but never a sketch for the letters themselves. Um, and that's my process. Thank you. Um, so I have like directed questions for some of you, and then we can all bounce off of that. And then I have other kinds of questions also. So this first directed question is for uh, Kahlo. Um, and how does your uh, cultural background and your background as a graphic designer inform your work, which combines neon geometric patterns with natural forms like tropical leaves and flowers with other forms like portraits and classical statues? You touched on this, um, like when you were talking about nostalgia and, and memory. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so um, it's almost like it's not gonna have to be like psychedelic, but it's almost, right? Yeah. Um, but it is a reflection of what you see when you're in the tropics. It's almost like you get a fever, like this, this historic fever that people get in the tropics where you get like malaria that you start hallucinating. Um, but in a way, um, it, it's like a, what, what I try, try to translate is that feeling of being in the tropics every time that I go there. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time um, in nature over there, and uh, I think that it just comes out as in a way that I translate that feeling of being there. Um, the geometrical forms, it's like a, just a, like a nice just a position of shapes, I think. Like the, um, the flora, like the banana leaf and and like the, the other, the palm leaf are like really easy shapes. And when you, you put uh, a triangle shape and like other like geometrical shapes, it's like a really nice just a position of elements that I like to explore like in all the forms. Um, and also it, it's like um, when, when you think about uh, how to adapt to an environment where everything else is like that, almost like square, um, I like to, I like to, to like, yeah, like to create this, uh, um, this point where anything, anything looks like it's like in a position, and that's why the collage sometimes works as well too. Um, that I just like to put it anywhere. Uh, it has a kind of, most of them has like a, um, almost like a parallel geometrical shape, like equal to the left or to the right, but it's always flora, and it just like. It's like a nice game that I feel like it's 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 pleasant for me to play with. Um, now, with the classical figures that we were talking about, um, yeah, I like to explore the idea of the tropics as a paradise um, with a very very dark and hidden past and present. Um, that's why some of my artwork represents this like a tropical flora and it's all like trendy and stuff. But behind all this idea of the tropic as a paradise, the, all this history uh, that, it, that it runs in, through my veins too. Um, I am that history. Um, that history is on my feet. I carry it everywhere. And 
the idea is that you can see how beautiful the tropics are, but people don't understand the whole history behind it. So when I put like a Greek or a Roman statue and then there's like a lot of like flora taking over it, it's like a way of representing the tropics taking back this idea of beauty that people try to implement in Latin America. Um, one easy way to understand this is that, um, for example, in, in the middle of the Amazon, uh, when the Portuguese uh, uh, settlers came, they wanted to civilize people, so they built an uh, opera house in the middle of the Amazon. And if you look it up, it's called the Amazon Opera House. Now, they brought this, all these pieces from Europe to, to build this like neoclassical building in the middle of the Amazon with the idea to civilize people. And that, if you see it, it's like wild. I mean, you see this huge structure in the middle of the rainforest and with the idea that, oh, you need this to be civilized, right? Um, still, until now, uh, we are dealing with that situation that we somebody is trying to implement something for to us in Latin America that maybe it doesn't work. So putting flora and fauna taking over all these structures for me is like not revenge, but it's like how naturally things happen. You can put anything by force on on on. Latin America, for the true nature of us, of how we are, is gonna come and take over, always. So that's behind the use of the flora. Uh -huh. Well, I, I hope it, it does come back and, and yeah. take over because the, the with the the rainforest burning. As, as yeah, long I mean, as it's they not. Have it right now, it's yeah, not it's sad, good. but uh, and that's the 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 issue also that is uh, um, it's. We lost that connection with nature, and that's why always I've tried to put flora in, in the murals, because um, we do need to come back to that. Like, we need to come back to that connection with nature that we somehow got lost from. And it makes sense when you talk about colonialism and the separation of nature and us. Uh -huh. totally. mm -hmm. Um, and then this is a, a general question for everybody again. Um, does, does working with the public uh, factor into your process at all? And, and what's the experience like uh, painting in, in a very public way, the way that uh, street art often requires? Um, and I'm also interested to know about the reactions that you're receiving as you paint these murals from the Haitian communities, from the Salvadoran communities and the Nepalese communities. Um, as they see their cultures reflected uh, in your works. <laughs> um, so there were three parts to your question. The first part was about... Yeah, about working in, in public. Okay. Um, being an introverted extrovert, it's always a challenge for me, but I've accepted that it's part of my job. <laughs> Usually people ask me if, so my tallest mural has been about 60 feet, which is six stories high, and usually people ask me like, oh, don't you get like scared on a lift all the way up there? And then I honestly tell people like, that's the safest I feel because that's just me. I know no one's gonna just walk up or like kind of like startle me because I'm so into like what I'm doing. And I understand that it's part of the process, but honestly, I feel safest when I'm high up there. So it's always like a challenge, but interactions with people who appreciate what you're doing is obviously very, like, it's, it's so much fuel for what we do as artists. Um, and it's, you know, it really fuels like my next project or it, it really makes me happy. So. Um, I welcome it. Um, what was the next part of your question? Um, yeah, like have, have people specifically Nepalese people? Yeah. With it? Um, you know, people haven't come up directly to me, but I'll know from like people who come to my shows and they'll like tag me afterwards or like at my wall I haven't met them, but people have come to my show and it's pretty amazing. 
I found a Nepali restaurant in Union Square. I didn't find, well, yeah, I found it. It was there for a long time, but like I finally went there. And it was, it, this was like last week, it was so cool. They were like, when I, when I told them my name to, for my order, the, the, the owner came out and she, and the first thing she said was, we're so proud of you. And I was just blown away because we've never met before. You know, and um, it meant the world to me. So uh, it's always special when that happens. Les mapteurs ont un public. On a un peu le monde a félicité si tout dans un restaurant haïtien côté un peu haïtien a voyagé. Monde qui connaît Haïti depuis le Mirail là, qui est un des artistes là, ça c'est Haïti qui le son de passer. I'm working. My, uh, the wall is at the Highland Cuisine on Highland Ave. And uh, Pascal experienced that people walk by and then they may not know that he was Haitian. And then they will say, Oh, this looks like somewhere in Haiti. <laughs> what is the lesson here? What is the theme here in the beginning? When you say that, I want to present two cultures. Haitian and Kilsi American. Then I explain to them that this is a, pro a mural project and my goal is to merge Haitian and American culture. But I also have my work on the table, my work on the table. I don't want to wait for the noise. And if anyone can talk about it, I don't know about it. Because the spirit is very disposed. I'm even detached from the core. When I usually do work on canvas and uh, usually do it in seclusion, even if somebody were to walk by or talking with me, I will usually don't even notice them. It's almost like the spirit is detached from the body as he is so well inspired while doing his painting. <laughs> Working on a canvas, uh, I look at the canvas and I let my imagination, uh, let, let my uh, imagination and inspiration guide and I start to think about what the painting will be like. Deuxième partie question. Réaction je n'aime mon yule ma peine. Ça t'aime quand t'as vu le passé tout le monde félicite. Il a pris mes travaux là, il a pris ses lits. Il s'est fait le monter. Vous le conscience mon sentiment qu'on regarde le travail plus bien toujours. In contrast, working on the mural with people walking by and giving their opinion and support that really fuel me to even do better. Pour faire tout le monde connaît comment représenter la culture haïtienne. C'est une obligation de obligation to complete the project and leave behind something that truly represents the Haitian culture. Et puis tout, c'est comme ça que je me sens bien. Je me sens fier parce que je suis un haïtien. Et puis tout, je travaille pour moi. C'est un travail pour faire l'autre. It's, this privilege is really excellent because uh, youth, uh, Haitian youth, can 
see the work and can relate to it. But I think I share both uh, your your uh, experiences too. Uh, I think once you're on the wall, I think we have to assume also a, a responsibility as a like a public art artist that you you do use that connection with somebody who's working on the street because you are you are occupying space. You are putting something visually on their walls, and they walk every day, every time. I mean, they were there every day, so there is some type of like responsibility about it, and also um, take advantage of being in a position of showing somebody something new and and fun. Also, um, I think that is part of what it makes a also a street artist or like a public artist a really important part of our communities too. Uh, that is not somebody that just came and painted a wall, but there's somebody that is also has a story and they can share it back and forth. Uh -huh. And I mean, both, um, both I relate with both of your stories too. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the, the dialogue and also the fuel mm -hmm. um, yeah. as, as you continue with these projects. It's great. Um, so themes about social justice appear in street art and murals often, and it's often in part to the, uh, because of the public nature of, of the art. Um, I'm thinking of the Mexican muralists um, who brought concerns of the working classes to a grand scale. Um, and also street art is subversive by nature. Um, so it's also aligned with protest movements pretty naturally. Um, and so maybe you can all touch on how themes of social justice fit into your work. Um, so I, my work is not political and directly related to social justice, but because I am who I am and I'm writing what I'm writing, it makes it a political and social justice related statement because, uh, I'm from Nepal, and like people from Nepal weren't meant to be here, weren't meant to have a loud voice, you know, as a culture, and then also just a visual representation too. So what does it mean when a kid from Nepal has an art piece that's like six stories high? It's more than a big art piece. It's giving voice to all the cultures well, not all the cultures, but there's resonance for cultures that are um, not as well represented, underrepresented cultures. So I think in that way, it makes it, uh, it makes it political. It makes it social justice related um, because of the nature of it, I would say. Yeah. <clears throat> Bon, pour moi même, travail moi, il plus travail mais un aspect politique parce que moi même dans pays par Haïti, politique là vraiment traversé une dimension qui qui pas beau dire. My work often signed in in what in politics because politics in Haiti is usually taking a path that is not getting better. In my painting, I, it's, there's the aspect of healing ideas and I'm often asked to reveal it. Because 
Mais le travail, ça, c'est un travail qui est facile. Il faut prendre plus de temps. In my work, I try to mobilize people and bring them to think at a level where they can take consciousness of what's going on and how to better. But this is not an easy job. Because the principal is to represent the distance, to represent the distance of the lion, and the distance of the lion. My painting has an aspect of a lion at the same time. Of a lamb. Au commencement, avant d'arriver au pouvoir, les politiciens comportaient comme un petit mouton, mais après au final, ils ont doublé comme un lion, un lion féroce. In Haiti, for the politician, the aspect is usually trying to get people to vote for them by presenting themselves as some as as a lamb, somebody who will come to bring forth solution. And once they are in power, they act as lions and ready to to do what they want to do. C'est ça que les premiers commencent à peine de gagner un nez, un œil ou moins mais un peu qui c'est tout c'est l'ouverture parce que nous c'était qu'ils ont capacité côté de toute son histoire noire et ça que fait un point chez comme un modèle pour peine. I focus a great deal on Haitian heroes because men like Toussaint Louverture set an example. And uh, that's why I chose to focus on men like Toussaint Louverture. Well, as the description said earlier, Pascal really focused on Haitian heroes uh, like many other artists in Haiti, there's a history where you cannot speak out loud. So the artists have to find ways to bring forth revolutionary ideas that are coded in their paintings because in the past, on the Duvalier, for example, if you were to speak out, uh, you, you become a target, you and your family. So. The artists, the way they sing, the way they paint, the way they speak, the way they write, has always been, there have been always hidden ideas and suggestions about their work. And uh, I was happy to hear how Pascal described him as a lamb and, and as a lion. <laughs> I think that it comes like back and forth, I think, like the political issues can motivate to produce art and then the art itself can like motivate um, a political thought. Um, I was born at the end of the Civil War in El Salvador, so I grew up looking on the street like specific type of propaganda from either 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 way um, motivating guerrilla uprising or later um, the propaganda from the parties to different parties. So visually impacted me the use of public space as somebody who can take over and just like write a name or like a phrase everywhere. Um, and then I never thought about how much that impacted until I got to study arts history from El Salvador. And then I, I understood like, wow, like people were doing a great job, even like writing down stuff like that, like uh, and during the war. Um, so I think that uh, the use of the space in public, um, it, before it was more like a graffiti, more like without permission and like you need to deal with like police and neighborhoods and whatever. And now the, the position of street art is a little bit more like in a comfortable stage where you can easily implement it as a as a community um, uh, as a community um, tool because you you get community together you talk about art and you you produce art so I think that's a, a political move, movement too not the fact that you are doing the piece but you are calling people to talk about art. Um, 
And it could be political too if you think about um, in El Salvador, at least, it's really dangerous to talk about uh, a, the protection of nature, like anti-mining, for example. I did a couple of murals with anti-mining uh, uh, organizations, and some of my friends who were organizers of these events, they were persecuted, they were like, their computers hacked, emails hacked and everything, and for a while we were like, a little bit afraid of like, are we doing the right thing? or? Or maybe we're like putting ourselves in risk over here. So if you're planning to do something right, that becomes something that is usually uh, used as a political tool. Um, but now, I mean, obviously here it's like a little bit more safe to do all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, it's like, a, it, is, it is a really rich way to bring uh, like everyone in the public library to talk about art, and I think that type of organization, it's also political too. Even, I mean, if you think about political in a way that it doesn't have to choose a party. I mean, I'm talking about the community organizing, that I think that's like, is the base roots of what really need, not watching TV and see whose party is doing what. Uh -huh. So in that, in that way, and in the way that you've all described, um, the art is political. Yeah. yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Pascal, your, your answer kind of uh, led into what I wanted to ask you um, about your, your depictions of figures from the Haitian Revolution, and uh, in particular, Toussaint Louverture, um, who is probably the well, most well-known figure from the Haitian Revolution, uh, for turning Haiti from colonialism and slavery um, to paving the way to the country's autonomy. And you, you mentioned, um, uh, or Watson mentioned um, coding in, in those paintings. And can you talk about the other figures that you paint and, and the types of codes that you put in your paintings? I'm currently working on, on, a, on a piece where I show two children, a girl and a boy. But I don't dialogue in the same time, but I have a dialogue this painting depicted two children sitting down, dialoguing, having a conversation, while the art, you can see clearly the Haitian flag that is torn and the two children are working to men together. In the background of the painting, and you can see a fire burning, and which represents the political system that these children are growing into. And the aspect of the painting, in my painting, the code that I use to represent the line is yellow and red, and the one for the Lamb is very yes. Yeah. Okay. It's green and blue, a very summer color. Couleur rouge, jaune, c'est gamme qui chaude là, qui est brisée de lion. L'autre gamme là, c'est gamme. Okay. So as you can tell, with the yellow and red, 
and that represents the lion, a blood sucking lion. Et puis, moi-même, le travail, moi, nouveau travail, moi, je viens d'inspirer dans l'autre dimension, côté un pile de monde dans la zone là. Tant que l'on a venu venir ici, on a perdu un tableau de la caille, moi, il y a un prêtre qui a passé, qui a fait des machines, qui m'a donné une explication. I was painting recently, before I came here, painting, and I was, there was a clergyman that was passing by stopping asked me to describe the painting. Mais sujet qui est dans le tableau, c'est l'histoire et religieuse. Côté Jésus même, c'est l'histoire de côté en Timoto. Et puis, étant de loin, côté Lyon a pété pour lui, pour lui bouche. In the painting, I depicted Jesus holding a lamb and in the background a voracious lion with open mouth running toward them. Mais étant Jean Paul Dablois, son surréaliste, côté me fait me fait fond en fait en sel ensemble avec lui. Mais forcément moi même qui explique lui vous comprenez. It's a very surrealist way of depicting the lion because it it is fused into the background. It makes one with the background. You really have to look very close, or I have to describe it to you to help you see the line coming. Prochaine exposition, oui. On t'a mis sujet ça, on t'a mis reproduit à nouveau pour montrer mon société dans ce même ville-là qui nous vous expérience, oui, qui basé sur bouton et lion. In the future, uh, as you know, he came back uh, in the past for the exhibit for, on Haitian youth to Saint Louverture. He's working on painting so that he can display lion and lamb type of paintings so that he can uh, show it to the public and hopefully will be near some of <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, uh, imagine. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the calligraphic swoops and bends uh, uh, float on your surfaces with uh, a nice architectural quality. Um, can you talk about your use of Sanskrit a little more and, and the, it, its significance? Um, maybe just elaborate on, on what you've already touched on. Sure. Thank you. So, um, Sanskrit is one of the oldest forms of writing and along with other older forms of writing like Arabic or Chinese, Sanskrit doesn't have or wasn't given an aesthetic value of any sort. So there's Arabic calligraphy and there's Chinese calligraphy. Um, even like Old English looks so beautiful and in these like epic texts like historic texts, it's written so beautifully. Growing up, first of all, there weren't a lot of children's book, books in Nepal when I was growing up, and the books that we did have had the same looking text everywhere from newspaper to books to just advertisements everywhere. There was no different way of writing Nepali. And for me, I thought, you know, how, well, Rewind a little bit. When I came to Boston, when I moved to Boston after uh, uh, um, after college, um, I was introduced to graffiti, and so graffiti was this art form that I didn't grow up with. I had no idea. So when I was introduced to it, I studied it like someone would study an art form from a textbook. Except I was talking to a lot of people and like reading whatever I could, scouring the internet to understand it better because. An art form that's solely based on the aesthetics of letters. It just blew my mind because I'd never seen it. I didn't grow up around it. And so from like an outsider's perspective, I thought that was the coolest thing ever, you know? Um, and so I started doing, like I started 
painting a lot of pieces, like full-blown pieces in English. And I got to a point where I was pretty decent. But I realized that my voice was kind of getting lost in it because what's my connection other than this, like, obsession with this art form, right? Like, how can I make my voice shine through this was a question that I kept asking myself. And I realized that if I write it, like, I learn how to write Nepali before I learn how to write English. So Nepali, writing in Nepali comes naturally to me. So what happens when I combine sort of that idea of like writing in Nepali and then graffiti? It was just, for me, growing up, uh, reading in Nepali was one of the hardest things for me to do because, you know, English was given so much preference that, and we also didn't have a lot of children's books. So when you don't grow up reading as an adult, even to read the daily newspaper in Nepali, it feel, felt like a chore, you know? Um, so I, and at that point, I'd also been away from home for quite a bit. And so I found my connection to Nepal in a way that was meaningful to me. Because at that point, everybody, or most people that I met, you know, when people, ask you where you're from and then you say Nepal and then they all you know all they would remember are like the tragedies the poverty and all that but I knew that my life was more than a pity party conversation right I was trying to look for because when I was growing up in Nepal nobody felt bad for me and so I was trying to wonder you know well what's my story then I am more than Mount Everest and Momos, right? Like what? Like what is my story? So when I started writing in Nepali, uh, I really found something that is very Nepali. I can tell people, yes, this is Nepali, but this is my sort of take on my culture. And it felt very authentic to me. Um, and nobody had, had written Sanskrit or Nepali in like an art form before. Um, and so I just kind of took it and ran with it. And um, yeah, it's kind of also paying homage to uh, the aesthetics of this historic sort of writing style that nobody really paid attention to. Um, and so it's kind of bringing um, a big part of history back and making it sort of like a modern artifact, if that makes sense. But yeah. Yes, very cool. Thank you. How are we doing on time? Um, so let's see, let's see what I have here. Um, I, I guess we can, we can wrap it up with this section before we go to, uh, opening up to questions from the audience. Um, I just want to give you all the opportunity to maybe plug things that you're working on after your Somerville project, um, what you have going on. I know, I know, imagine you have uh, a project up right now at the MFA, if you wanted to talk about that. Okay. I, I, I've seen it, it's, it's so great, you have to talk about it. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Um, so I have a show at the MFA at the moment, it's called Mindful Mandalas. Um, it's a six month long show, uh, but it's over on October 11th. So I would, you know, really invite you to go check out the show. Um, it's a 30 foot long mural inside the MFA. Um, I painted a huge wall in the MFA and just the idea of it was just super exciting. And I think it's it might be one of the first times that there's art by a Nepali artist who is living and the artwork wasn't stolen from the country. <laughs> so I would say it's pretty significant for me and just like the history of contemporary art. Um, go see it. It's up till only October 11th, so it's going to be over soon. Yeah. So thank you. You can plug something from the past also. Oh, yeah, share the address of your murals. Sure. We can do that at the end so people got fresh. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. There you go. Uh, um, so, lately, I think, yeah, this year has been like a busy year. Um, I've been working with the Philadelphia Middle Arts program that um, brings art to the different communities in Philly, and specifically with the restorative justice program that works with uh, re entry and probation mm -hmm. youth. Um, and we 
we just created and we finished it, like a couple of uh, uh, murals in Philly, and we are working um, in a, a couple more. Um, I haven't like even like take any good pictures of them yet because it's like a little bit crazy with everything, but. Um, that that's what is this year's is uh, upcoming also, and one of the projects that we're working right now is with the Philadelphia Water Department. We are trying to motivate people to drink tap water, um, and also reduce the waste. The uh, the thing that I'm doing right now, <laughs> like drinking water from a bottle. But we're trying to reduce the the use of water bottle uh, plastics like this. That is good uh, for the environment, uh, also good for your wallet. I mean, at least for Philly area, we're trying to motivate that, and we are so creating a little campaign using a couple of murals to do that. Um, uh, and then a couple of uh, personal projects that, and like little things that I have around. Uh, probably by next year, um, I have a couple of pieces that I have to show in El Salvador. Um, Last, like two years ago, we had like a little show with a, uh, a surfing and arts uh, community and, and art organization in El Salvador uh, that it was focused in like the surfing community in a specific town. Um, some of that artwork, uh, it was like a display on this beach town, but now um, I'm collecting more of the artwork that we have I've been doing all these years and I'm gonna have like a little show uh, in a, it's lucky enough that there's new spots in San Salvador scene, and there's, as you were describing in the art scene, at that time when I was like doing art in El Salvador, wasn't open to a specific type of work. Now it's changing, so we are like opening like this, like little like art scene in San Salvador, specifically for street art and a contemporary artwork. Youth, uh, you collectors, um, young people doing art. So hopefully by February next year, I will have a, I will have a show in this place in, in San Salvador. And it's like feels great to to say it that way because before, if you said it in El Salvador that you were going to do uh, a sh a, like a show in a gallery and you were saying that you had used uh, spray paint, they will say like don't say that you use spray paint because nobody's gonna buy it. Or like nobody gonna come and see it because they think that it's, it's uh, I mean it's like, yeah, it's, you know, um, but it, that comes with the idea of that fine arts is only oil paintings, and it feels great to say I will have a show in San Salvador that it's based on my artwork in public spaces using spray paint. So that uh, feels good. So yeah. Objectif moi c'est terminer petit parce que même petit ça me gagne ici dans ce ville là on gagne la caille au cap I am right now focusing on completing the mural the same mural that I'm completing in some of them I already completed a similar one in Cape Haitian Dans son côté me fait petit ça mon yo tellement apprécié yo prend bambou you barry, lead the barry, if you never busy for photo, you will feel like that. Where I have this, uh, just one quick second. Before coming to here to do the meal, uh, Pascal and his friend, I, I cannot say that enough, said that before we come to Somerville, we have practically the way they said it before we come clean somebody else's house, we have to clean ours first. We want to do a meal in Cape Haitian first, and then we'll come to some of to do the same meal. So he is describing how th this meal that was that was part of a, the initiative of coming to some of them. They built do that meal first. He said people are so appreciative of this meal that they started to put bamboos around it, and this is one place where people start to come to take pictures in front of the mural in Cape Haitian. 
Et puis, je me suis content en pile, je suis retourné dans le pays de Haïti pour quitter un symbole dans la ville ville à toute population haïtienne qui vit ici. Depuis que je suis là, je suis content de ça, c'est une culture haïtienne. Et je me suis content en pile parce que je suis quitté un groupe et je suis dans la ville. Once I return home, I know that this mural will be in display every day, every night, where Haitian, my Haitian people, <laughs> from some of them, will be able to walk by it and appreciate it and think of home. And that makes me very happy to be part of it. <laughs> Depuis le mapsot, depuis que je viens ici, je suis sorti, je suis allé à Haïti, on a toujours cherché, demandé, et on a toujours aimé tout, parce que dans la communauté, quand je suis sorti, je suis allé à Haïti, je ne suis pas allé à Haïti. C'est l'objectif de ne pas prendre l'argent dans la main, je suis allé à Haïti pour venir devenir un grand, grand, même j'avais, même les beaucoup grands, mais je suis allé à Haïti pour ça. Et aussi, je voudrais apporter equipment for youth in Haiti because uh, I teach painting to young children and I bring, whenever I leave the state, I bring with me equipment so that I can go home to teach them. And they are well inspired by what that I've done. And this is one other piece of accomplishment. And Pascal is working toward greatness. He would like to become a better artist, and by teaching, he learns by teaching. Et puis activité moi dans zone là, c'est ou bien activité peut m'organiser toujours faire chaque mois octobre. Toujours faire une date 17 octobre qui c'est la mort de Dessaline. Toujours représenter elle si mon mieux faire et puis à population. Something else I've been doing is every October 17 we celebrate uh, the death of Desaline, where my students put in display their work depicting Desaline, a great Haitian hero. Pas intéressé sur ça. Et moi, je me sens fier pour la relève. À chaque date qui marque l'histoire de l'histoire d'Haïti, l'histoire d'Haïti, je toujours faire un petit ambiance dans un an pour enlever la conscience à l'histoire. En novembre 18, aussi, dans ma neighborhood, j'ai aussi un exhibit où je showcase le travail des enfants. Uh, the politicians usually do not put a lot of effort to, to celebrate uh, our history. And I feel that it is my duty to, to keep the children... Uh, this is November. This is November is the date of Bataille de Vetia, which is one of the last battles that sealed the independence for Haiti. So by doing the artwork around that time for the children is to really keep them connected to the roots. Thank you. Um, thank you all, Pascal and Carlo and Imagine. And now I want to open it up for anybody that might have any questions for any of these amazing artists. Everybody's hungry. Thank you all again for coming, and I just want to thank all of our artists, and thank you so much for interpreting Watson. We really appreciate it. Um, can we have a round of applause for Watson? Dave, thank you so much for moderating and being part of this project. We really appreciate it.
for the videographer and everybody else here who was a part of supporting this project. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, one sec. So I'm gonna um, thank you. Um, I just want to let you know where all the walls are. So Imagine is painting at 47B Webster Ave, um, which is right at the corner of Webster and Prospect in Union Square. Um, Calo is starting tomorrow on his wall at 50 Broadway, which is a block or two down towards Sullivan here on Broadway. And um, Pascal is painting at 2 Highland Ave, which is the Highland Creole Cuisine Restaurant, which is at the corner of Highland and Medford. Um, near the other public library, Central Branch. Um, so Pascal and Imagine will be working, I think, through this weekend. Um, so catch them soon. And um, Calo is starting tomorrow and working next week. So please go visit them, invite your friends to go by, and maybe don't bother them for too long while they're painting, but go say hi and wave and be friendly. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for coming. Um, thank you for the library for hosting us. And we're going to go down to Rincon Restaurant um, down here for appetizers and to chat more with the artists. So please feel free to join us. Thank you. Um, we have a festival this weekend. It's the Black, Brown, and Queer Festival. It's the first time we've done an LGBTQ Artists of Color Festival. All of the artists are um, queer people of color and all different genres. There's going to be drag performances, punk music, um, indie music, um, rap, spoken word, all different types of things. It's 3 to 7 on Saturday in Union Square, um, and we'd love for you to join us. And um, for more events that we're doing in the rest of the year, and the Nibble Kitchen and all of our other projects, you can check out our website, which is SomervilleArtsCouncil.org. Thank you.